is Metaphysics. You're watching Intruders TV. My first question is about music in Germany. Well, music in Germany has evolved over the years. Um, Germany doesn't really have a musical background in pop, and um, they're more famous for their classical uh, musicians. They've had many, many great composers. Uh, in the past, a lot of historical figures, but with the changing of times, they've also had you know to to adapt to pop culture, and uh, a lot of people don't know it, but many of the great reggae albums, for example, have been recorded in Germany. A lot of classic um, pop records. Uh, Michael Jackson used to visit um, Germany quite often to do his albums, and the the Germans are renowned for being very technical and being able to, you know, master and produce to the fullest. So I think um, compared to the rest of the world, Germany is definitely one of the leading countries as far as the innovation of new technologies or the application of sciences to their music. And um, now it's a global world with obviously the internet. So pop culture or music culture in general has just become one sort of element and Germany is definitely part of that. And uh, what are the m most heard uh, style of music and the most heard uh, group or uh, singers there in Germany? Um, there's a lot of uh, really famous groups. Um, historically, looking back, we have people like Nena, we have the Scorpions. Um, most recently, we have uh, Tokyo Hotel and things like that. But I think what confines German music is the uh, international population of the German language. It's not as vast as, let's say, French, which you find in Africa, which you find, you know, uh, all over the world, or English, which is an international language, which makes the music more accessible. So um, because of language, German music is confined to Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. And that's probably why it's not as exposed internationally, besides groups like Rammstein that have made impact uh, in the U.S. But uh, your own group, uh, Son of Manheim, is playing in France, is playing in London. Uh, uh, so it's not a problem, the language, for you? Uh, not really, but you'll find that most of the audience that comes to our international show of ours is mainly German people. You know, it would be cool if you played in France for uh, a French audience or you went to Italy and it's an Italian audience. We catering to the few Germans that are in France who happen to be here and it's going to be something nice for them to do tonight. No, oh, there's a German band. Let's support the Germans type situation. So, but I, I think slowly, you know, um, we're definitely beginning to bridge the gaps. Okay. And um, uh, for, you, for your group, uh, when you came in France or in, uh, in England, you're 14 artists on the stage. Yeah. Uh, how do you make to have such uh, uh, so big uh, numbers of uh, artists? Um, to be honest, back in Germany, uh, the band is pretty famous and plays in y uh, huge stadiums. And that makes a difference because we fill the space. We're playing for a very large audience, and um, the more you are, the more there's a presence. Um, playing smaller venues like this, it's quite difficult to have so many people. And I think it's definitely a challenge. It's a challenge either way, yeah. Uh, and about the organization to, uh, to join, oh, uh, you, you all are living in Mannheim? Not really, not, not really. Um, the core foundation of the band lives in Mannheim. Um, the very few of us, like myself, I don't live in Mannheim. It's probably one or two of us that don't live in Mannheim, actually. Huh. But it's um, a professional setup with two offices in Mannheim. Um, okay. There's great uh, um, uh, uh, administration when it comes to organizing. Uh, we have a, a, a full team behind the scenes. You see 14 okay. people on stage. For those 14 people, there's 90 people backstage doing the organization the sound and you know if we we on the road we move with three buses and a truck for example so ah. it's not you know it's not a hobby band okay and um to join holy artists uh uh either um for a stage or either to make an album mm -hmm. um how do you organize uh, especially um i mean like i said we have a, a whole production team and obviously ah, okay. it starts it starts with an idea Um, and uh, whoever's necessary for that idea, uh, whether it's guitarist or keyboardist or rappers for a particular idea, they'll be brought in. And, um, you know, we have Xavier Naidu and Michelle Herberger 
who call the shots basically and tell you know the others what needs to be done but it's a it's a pretty well greased machine that's been going for the last 13 years and it works so okay and um um, about, by example, your, your next album is going to be ha released out in a few times. Mm. Um, uh, it's uh, written and composed by uh, just one or two uh, guys? or uh, um, it, de it depends on um, the environment that the song was created. Uh, some songs we all come together and we write it together. Some songs somebody starts it at home and has the key idea. So it varies with, uh, uh, with the tracks, but we share the, the workload. Okay. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And um, now it's been uh, more than 10 years that you are together. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did it cross the times? Because it's not obvious uh, with 14 people to stay together for more than 10 years. Right? Yeah, I mean, um, discipline, good organization, and success. Success will keep you. If, we, if the band was not successful or if we didn't have a successful leader, I don't think we would have gone that long. But uh, I think it's due to the fact that we still sell records. Okay, and um, uh, you um, often see you yourself uh, to work together, uh, and, uh, and even sometimes to have personal relationship by uh, going to restaurants to have parties. Um, I mean, most most guys we we're an older band now, so a lot of us have separate responsibilities, families. No. Um, a lot of the guys in the band actually run their own businesses, whether it's mm -hmm. studios that they do sessions and recordings for other artists, or in general, just mm -hmm. uh, uh, personal things that need to be taken care of. So you find that um, when we're away from the band environment, we all have individual uh, things to take care of. So it's not like we'll all hang out on Saturday and go and, and play yeah. tennis. Yeah. And it's not like Zona Mannheims is our fundamental project. Um, I manage, for example, three other groups, uh, one based in London, one based in South Africa. I have my own projects, my own studio. And it's the same with all the other members as well. Everybody has something that they're taking care of uh, on the side. Okay. And about the public, uh, when I came here uh, at the Divan Limon, uh, uh, in front of the door, I saw a lot of girls, uh, women. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, how do do you explain that and do you yourself um, play and uh, by uh, taking this if these things in, in account I mean it would be a bit awkward if there was a band with 14 men and the audience was 90 percent men it would be <laughs> very strange so <laughs> we're lucky that you know 90 percent are women and I think it's due to the fact that we are all male band for example and um we it was never intended that way it's just through the years become that our main uh criterion our main audience is made up of the you know the female gender okay and uh in your songs uh, are there something specific specific you want to express like i, I spoke about a woman by example but is, is there something that's an idea that um, are you a making philosophy music? behind the yeah, music? Yeah, I mean, generally, uh, a lot of people think that we are a Christian oriented band, but the fact is that the band is made up of people who are spiritually aware, spiritually conscious. So that translates into the music. Then, obviously, we're politically aware, so there's a lot of political elements. And then we have love songs for women, specifically written mm. ballads that really are for women and then like on this new album we have songs thanking our parents for example okay. and you know just uh, um, being grateful for the fact that we can do what we do on stage so like I suppose any other group we sing generally the same topics we might be a little bit more towards uh, rebellion and revolution but um, I, I, I think Mo I think most pans are at the end of the day. There's very few messages singers can sing about. <laughs> <laughs> and um, outside of uh, just playing music, I uh, have heard about that you were making some action, uh, social action, particip participate uh, as well inside the music world, but m even outside of music Yes, world. yeah. I mean, with a, with a level of uh, 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 success also comes a, a, a level of responsibility. Oh, okay. And there's a great social responsibility in Mannheim in particular, um, you know, so the band has set up organizations to help street kids, people that are destitute and don't have homes, and just give back to the community. And I think it's kind of our way of just saying thank you for the support 
and the people have helped us and it will only be right to help others along the way whether it's projects going out and speaking to kids anti-racism you name it we, we try and stay socially active and involved okay and um, to come back to the music uh, now you are you are in tour you got an album who's gonna come out is there a specific difference uh, with this album uh, towards uh, the first ones I mean, the, the obvious difference with this one is that we've stepped away from the theme, which is Zion. All our albums had the letters Z-I-O-N okay. in them in the past, whether it was Zion, Is On, Noise. We, we kind of played with, that, um, with those letters. And for the first time, we've stepped away from that theme. And that's probably the most obvious thing. But as far as the music, um, I think we're sticking with the formula that's worked for us all through the years. It's um, what you'd expect from a Zerna Mannheim's album. We haven't tried to get too creative or step out of our, our comfort zone. We've stuck to the rules and, you, you know, the fans will be happy. Okay. Okay. And now the, the, the album is ready? It's, uh, yes. Okay. Our uh, first single is out, Aim High. Okay. And uh, for the future, uh, uh, is, this, is it possible that there is a big change in the sound or in the way to work? Um, by example, some ideas you may have now, but you're not totally sure about it, or you want to still work? Mus music evolves. Hmm. Music evolves. It's, uh, the technology evolves, new sounds come along, you add that. New trends come along, you want to stay current with the audience. You've got to change and adapt. Um, that's, that's the nature of everything in, in life. So with the music as well, it's going to change and adapt with current situations or the feel of what's going on. So th the evolution within the band itself is, is a constant, like with anything else. All right. Okay. And um, any last word to say for maybe for uh, young groups, young bands or uh, for people in France or uh, all over the world? Something you believe in and you, you want to share? Um, I think... Y for the people that are trying to get into the music business, you have to be very dedicated and um, willing to sacrifice a lot of time and energy. But you have to believe in yourself. And there's a lot of great music coming out of France, for example. They've had a great musical culture for years. Just keep it up. Just uh, believe in yourself, believe in the music, and have fun doing it, the most important thing. OK. And just a uh, last question. Uh, about all the things you you hear uh, as a music, are there three specific uh, bands or uh, producer or uh, singers that yourself you want to um, advise to people to hear? Oh, definitely the first would be Zerna Mannheim's. Advice <laughs> that everybody goes and then, and, and, then, and then checks that out. And then the second would be myself, my solo project, <laughs> Metaphysics. Go and check that out. And then my younger brother, Carl Pritz, was doing very successful in the United States. Check that out. Those are my top three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank okay. you. Thank you.